episode of Discover Denton, a show brought to you by the Convention and Visitors Bureau, highlighting events around Denton. This week, we have Kim Phillips of the Convention and Visitors Bureau, as well as Christine Gossett, events coordinator for the Main Street Association, talking about arts, antiques, and autos, which is happening on the square this Saturday. So, without any more ado, here is Discover Denton. Hello, Denton, and welcome to Discover Denton Radio on DentonRadio.com. I'm Kim Phillips coming to you from the Denton Convention and Visitors Bureau, and our guest today is Christine Gossett. Christine is the event coordinator for the Main Street Association in downtown Denton, and one of their primary events every year is Arts, Antiques, and Autos Extravaganza, and that's actually coming up Saturday, September the 14th. So we've got Christine here to talk a little bit about the event and explain some of the things going on that might be of interest to get you out to see some things about downtown that maybe you've not experienced before. Christine, thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. I'm glad you could be here. And I know one of the questions that we hear a lot is, how did Main Street get rolling with a car festival in the first place? Well, actually, about um, 14 years ago, we had an event called the great race you might be familiar with history channel's great race and yeah we were a pit stop that year and it actually came through on the same day as dog days and um so we dog days is your other festival well that's another festival in downtown it's not main streets but it is a festival that's in the summer and years ago it was on the square and after that festival was over we had all these cars come through for a pit stop for the great race they're like historic cars they were historic cars antique cars and hundreds, probably thousand, two thousand 2,000 people came out to see these antique cars. And we realized, wow, there's a lot of excitement for antique and classic and hot rod cars. And it just looked so cool with downtown as the backdrop that we decided, um, the group decided at the time, Main Street decided it needs to be, um, we need to have a car show um, in the fall for our fall festival. And so that kind of spurred the idea. And then the next year we did have in 2000, we started the Arts, Antiques and Autos Extravaganza, combined it with the arts and the antiques because we have those two things downtown as well, antique galleries and art galleries. And um, there's just a lot of interest in things that are nostalgic and collectible. So we felt that downtown was a great place um, to have that type of event and it would showcase all the great things in downtown. So, well, like, so how many cars are we talking about? We have up to 200 depending on the weather. Of course we, we um, have it rain or shine and we do have cars that come out um, no matter what, but we've had an average of 175 cars the last couple of years. How does that compare to that first great race? Well, the first great race, the cars were from the History Channel group, and they came through, and it was about, I think about 100 cars drove through. And so literally, literally they, right they stopped for like five, ten minutes for their pit stop, and then they left. But people came out just to get a glimpse of these cars. So for them to be on the square all day for, for classic cars, antique cars, it's great because people can come down and take their time looking, and they can get up close and see these cars. and and reminisce and 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 it's a competition for the cars right yes it is it is um a competition in 17 classes 19 classes for cars and trucks and then five for motorcycles and we do give out some we're giving out new awards this year uh, that the public can vote on they're kind of whimsical themed awards and some of those include um, best midlife crisis car, best drive-in movie car, <laughs> best family truckster. So we, we have a couple more in that category that um, people can vote on, and that would be a public vote. And then we have judges vote on the 19 
and five classes that we have for car, truck, and motorcycle. And then we also have the public vote on their favorite in the motorcycle class and in the car, truck class. So um, there's lots of awards to go around, but it really is um, become a true competition. But it's a fun competition, and we encourage our community members to come out with their cars and you know compete for the day and have fun with it and um it's great to see your neighbors and we do see a lot of longtime denton residents out there with their cars and motorcycles and it's just a great day on the square yeah car enthusiasts get to meet one another and kind yes of there's a lot of shop talk among the folks and um we have a lot of people walking around with their grandchildren talking about when they had a car that like that or their father will mother will be telling them about a car they had in high school or like college. like give us some examples of maybe some of your winning cars or the favorite cars you've seen come through what kind of cars were they well last year's i believe was a 60 chevy impala and it was really impressive and these people put a lot of time and effort into their car restoration so it it was a real really nice car we've had um old trucks in the past 50s trucks and a lot of the popular cars are from that 60s 50s 60s era but they go back i remember um one year a previous city council member of ours jack thompson yes. and he had a what was it a model i think model it's a, a model a model or model t but it was yeah. definitely an antique car yeah, so we have that, that category as well and a lot of those end up coming in a street rod um, categories as well because they've been fixed up and engines changed and I don't know enough about cars to to know but, but I they're have, still I fun to look at to even if oh yes yeah. they are definitely fun to look at and you do not have to be a car expert to come to this show um, you just have to enjoy a good quality restoration job and and the piece of art that those cars are because they are truly um a, a work of art for the owners and some of them are works in progress so it's really exciting to see some of the people come out one year to the next what they've changed on their car um, our judges have a great time with it and so we we really have had a good um following of folks that come out every year with their cars and they'll change the car they bring from year to year and so it has it really is a community car show and, and we really um encourage folks to to enter and you still can enter up to the morning of the event you don't oh, that's have good to, to know. enter i mean you you're encouraged and to there's enter a, ahead there of time, is a small fee for registering yes, a vehicle there is yeah. um so the rent information is all on our website and uh, the instructions for coming and entering um, the morning of the important thing to know is you cannot get in the show after 8 30 a.m and and if parking is full parking's full and we can't let people Firm in so we do deadline. encourage yes we do encourage early entry another fun part of the show that's coming back this year that ha that started um several years ago um was the chalk fest chalk art fest and we actually have a competition with that as well that is um so we're I, i'm seeing kids drawing hopscotch on the well, sidewalk it's kids no it's kids and adults very talented children and adults and uh, and we have three age categories we have 11 and under we have 12 to 17 and 18 and older there is a fee to enter for 18 and older and 12 to 17 and children 11 and under are free there are rules you have to follow there's guidelines um, we do have entry forms on the website as well. So, so we're talking real art. Yes. On the sidewalks. Yes. I believe the art is the, the art, this type of art originated in Italy. And so, um, we have had it in the past and these drawings are amazing. And it, you know, if you remember Mary Poppins where he was drawing on the chalk uh, yeah. and they and jumped jumps into in. the drawing. Yes. These are, this is how some of these drawings have looked in the past. They have been that three-dimensional so um we have some really talented artists in this town and and we really try to showcase them at this event um thus the arts portion of our name and so we have um we have that contest we have an art contest that we run throughout the summer that people can enter their works into the show and we'll decide a winner and um, this year's winner um ernest ernie stripling he had his winning photo put on the poster and art promotional materials for this year it was is a, it a art of any Buick. kind or is it only art about cars it is art about cars denton icons denton landscapes denton downtown it's so just, just yeah it's it's a little bit of a mix feel, but a local feel in. definitely okay. a local art contest different mediums can enter 
Um, there is still some time to get that in this week if someone wants to do that. We also encourage the Chalk Art Fest pre-entry by Thursday, September 12th. Good to know. So, That's a neat thing to watch, just to yes, watch people to watch create it. a masterpiece on the sidewalk. Right. And it and, really is masterpiece and, level art. People. It is. And you can't tell what it's going to be when they start and then when they finish. It's just amazing. Yeah. So considering we haven't had much rain, these little masterpieces may be around on the sidewalk of West Oak for a while to come stroll downtown and take a look after the show as well. Take pictures. Yes. Or um, and it will happen on West Oak Street uh, between Elm and um, right about a, a creative arts studio that corner there so okay so that little stretch there in front of banter yes the lab that Scrap. area of oak yes. street okay. it'll be on the south end so it won't be in front of the lab but it'll be in front of banter a scrap uh shop the barn and a creative art studio that okay. strip and then if we need Good. to expand up to the square we will but Good it's going to gonna start there on that 200 well, block well tell us a little bit about the antique part of the name well, we, we actually, again, got the idea when we had that uh, show in 2000 when we changed the fall festival and the theme of it all um, because we had the antique galleries downtown and it was brought, our antique owners said, hey, there's a lot of people who want to know about their collectibles at home, their antiques at home. Let's do some information appraisals. And so we started that tradition and people will bring out um, collectible items that they've had in their attic from you know grandma or an aunt or that they found at a garage sale they're just curious what it is uh, we've had some people come out with i believe one of the most interesting things we had was something signed by amelia Earhart. so oh wow people have a lot of stuff in their closets that they they find yeah, I, remember, and treasures. I remember one year um i was working in the information booth and it happened to be situated right next to this fellow from unt that was actually a an expert in antique dolls. And I'll oh, yes. never forget this because this a lady had some old dolls that had been passed down through her family stuck in the attic. She's cleaning out her attic. She finds these dolls and thought, thinks I'm going to take them to Arts Antiques and Oz and just for the heck of it, see if they're worth anything. One doll was worth $10,000. And this lady was just, she just, I was almost ready to put them in a garage sale. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there and are things people do not know what they have. Oh, all the time. And I'll tell you another story. My husband collects baseball memorabilia. For those of you that read my Sunday column in the DRC, you may be familiar with that fact because I did a story on it just recently about living with a collector. And what's interesting about it is uh, one year he was at Arts Antiques and Autos and doing sports memorabilia antique you know, appraisals, informal appraisals. And this guy walks up and had just cleaned out his attic and had a pile of things that were baseball related, just random, a baseball, a hat, a couple of cards, just a few things, brings it up. And one thing in there was a ticket stub from a baseball game from way back in the 1930s. That ticket stub alone sold for eight hundred dollars on mm -hmm. eBay. What when was my the husband significance of it. the stub? Well, for the game, it was completely insignificant unless you're a collector. Oh, and there was a collector out there that had collected every ticket in that particular series of games, and he was missing that one ticket. Wow, that's see, that's where you just don't know what you, you never have. No, and now with eBay, it's a whole new world it is. of what of what an item means you know any item no matter how important it seems or how valuable it seems it's really and truly when it comes down to liquidating that item it's only as valuable as what somebody will give you money for and in that case that ticket which would normally have been about a $50 value had an $800 value because two guys needed that ticket in their collections <laughs> wow and and to be a collector it takes commitment and time it i will really and space does. and space so if you don't have space and or if you are collecting and you want to know more so that you can go on ebay and get that good bid um you know these aren't for insurance purposes they are just information appraisals just a little bit of a history and a background for people to find out about uh different antiques clocks cut glass silver jewelry fine jewelry um, so, and we have art. Art will be done um, over at W. Douglas and County Seat Antiques. She'll be doing general antiques and cut glass silver. Um, Amex Fine Jewelry will do the jewelry. 
and clocks will also be at W. Douglas. So clocks and art and general antiques you can also do there. So basically, if you got stuff and you wonder, this is the Saturday find out. Yes, about it. it is. But don't bring furniture. If you can't carry it in, we can't look at it or our appraisers can't. And it is five dollars an item or three items for ten dollars. And you can get the appraisal tickets at the information booth or you can go to the store who's doing that area those areas of appraisals and they can sell you the tickets tell you the information and all the money that's raised goes back to the main street association yes. to support that yes it does to support the revitalization and preservation efforts of downtown denton and we also have a silent auction going on in the courthouse that will be supporting that effort as well so you can come in to the courthouse and bid on some great products services gift certificates entertainment not to All. brag, like Horse Country Tour. Yes, the of CBB course. CBB has a Horse Country Tour <laughs> package in there, folks, and it includes a hotel night here in Denton. So. Right. And you can even get a photo made outside the courthouse in a 1931 Ford Model A Roadster. You can dress in 1930s um, costumes and, and then get your any, photo made for $5. Any event in Denton, especially one that rolls, is also going to rock. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the music. I know that DentonRadio.com is heavily involved with our local artists. Yes, we will have some great local DentonRadio.com artists that morning starting um, at 9 o'clock. We'll have some acoustic artists out there. Then at 11 o'clock, we have um, High School Caesar. we play in some great music for us. And at 1230, we have the Guitar George Trio. And they those groups are great all you know denton's just full of musicians there's never um, a lack of music to entertain that's so right. the, when you come downtown that's where you find it and so again that's another way we showcase our downtown and and um it's past it's present and it's future and it's going to be a great weekend in denton this weekend in fact dentonradio.com's got music on the square during the event and then after the event is over, head out to Razor Ranch if you're not going to the UNT game. And there's music all evening long out at Razor Ranch as well. So it's going to be a musical weekend. But speaking of the game at UNT this weekend, it's a 3 o'clock kickoff. So you can actually come to Arts, Antiques, and Autos and still make the game just fine. But whether you're going to the game or not, if you're headed to Arts, Antiques, and Autos or you've got friends that may would come up and join you to come out to the event... There's a special going on this weekend with the A-Train. You can get on the A-Train anywhere in Denton County and ride for free this weekend if you're wearing UNT green. You don't even have to have UNT or any logos or anything on your shirt. Your shirt just has to be UNT green. And if you're wearing that, you can ride the train to and from for free all hours of the day this coming Saturday. And um, if you are going to plan to go to the game, you want to come to the event downtown, there's going to be a special bus running from downtown to the footbridge at UNT where you can just walk right up to Apogee Stadium, buy your day of game ticket and attend the game and then come back downtown to party and play or go out to Razor Ranch and hear music. But in other words, we've got it covered when it comes to transportation. Don't worry about parking because there are a lot of antique cars on the square this weekend. Make it easy on yourself. Ride the train, and it's a two-block walk from the train station to the square where it's all going to be going down this weekend, and then an easy bus ride out to the footbridge, and you're at the game. So we've, we've, we've made it very, very easy. It's going to be a super fun weekend in Denton, and hope you'll be able to come up and join us. In the meantime, Christine, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, and we hope everyone will come out. Um, we just wanted to mention, I, I did not mention, that we will have some uh, arts and crafts booths as well, and we have some kids' craft area and some other activities. So it's fun for the whole family. Bring everybody out. Sounds good. Thanks for being here. We'll hope to see you all this weekend in Denton. And in the meantime, have a great week, and I'll talk to you next week. There you have it. That was this week's episode of Discover Denton. A big thanks to Kim Phillips of the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Another big thanks to Christina Brevard of the Main Street Association. A huge thanks to Gravity Feed for providing the intro and outro music. I'm Jake Laughlin, your host. Join us next week where we will be bringing you more highlights of our original and independent city. And in the meantime, go enjoy Denton.